Once we're happy with our particle simulation, it is time to instance some geometry into the points. Now, just before we continue, here's a note. I made a few changes to the simulation just to make the look more appealing. So first of all, I added more pieces to the fragments. So now we have more and smaller fragments. I also changed a bit the kill by travel distance. I increased it a little bit. And I also changed the timing. We had the kill frame to frame 18. I increased it to 24. And I also added a little bit of turbulence. So I added a pop force and increased the amplitude to 2 and the swirl size to 2. So this will break up a little bit more the pattern of the trails just to make it look a little bit more natural as if there was a bit of air. So let's go with this. I'm going to go back to my sub context and we need to export the points. We can do that with an IO import or actually a DOP IO, sorry. So what I'm going to do here under the top IO parameters, I'm going to drop the pop trails network here where it says dop network. I can actually copy the name and paste it. And after a slash, you can type pop object. So we've done this before. Just if you don't remember the pop object node that we're exporting is this pop object node here. So we're exporting it out of the network into the sub context as points. So one final thing we need to do is here under presets, we need to choose bring in as particles. So now we're bringing in the geometry here to the sub context with that top IO node. So let's take a look at the attributes that we're bringing in. You can click on the eye icon here on the node. And you will notice that there's a lot of attributes. Most of them we won't need. So I'll add a delete attribute node just to clean the information that we won't be using. Remember, if you cache thousands or millions of particles, the more attributes you have, the heavier the file will be. So let's keep only a few of these attributes. Here under point attributes, type asterisk, which means delete everything. So right now we only have the P, the position of the particles. And actually we also do not need vertex attributes, nor primitive, nor detail attributes. So the only things that I'm going to keep are the velocity and a few other attributes. So to bring this attribute in, you can type shift six to create this caret symbol and then type V for velocity. You can also check here under this drop down what other attributes we have. So for sure, I will need age and life. So let's type caret age and caret life. And I will also bring the rest attribute. So type caret and rest. So let's go with this. If later we notice that we need more attributes, we can still come back and add them here. So one main attribute that you will need to instance geometry into the points is the P scale attributes, which at this point hasn't been created. So let's add a point wrangler node. Let's call it set P scale. Let's change the color for this node. And for now, let's type the following F because the P scale is a floating value at P scale equals to one and semicolons. So press control enter. And this is enough to create the attribute. So if you want to double check, you can middle click on the node. And here you will find 
the p scale value. Of course, if we go to the geometry spreadsheet, all of the particles will have a value of 1. So for effects like sand and dust, I usually like to use cubes as geometry. So let's add a box node. For now, let's go with the default size of 1 squared meter. Also, remember that the points have a particle scale of 1. So right now, if we add a copy to points node, you can connect the box to the first input, the particles to the second input, and you will notice that we have giant cubes. Actually, each cube will be exactly one square meter just as the original box. And for now, I would leave it like this just to show you something very important. So most of the times when we have disappearing particles, in this case, I want the dust just to completely disappear before it falls to the ground. We can animate the p scale value with the combination of age and life. So a common practice would be to generate a normalized age attribute that usually goes from 0 to 1. 0 when the particle is born and 1 when the particle is just about to die. So let's do that now. Let's create the normalized age attribute. So type f for floating point number at norm h for normalized age and what we're going to do is divide the age attribute by the life attribute. So I will type semicolon, control enter to evaluate. So let's take a look at the geometry spreadsheet. Let's go to frame 0 or frame 1 and step forward the animation until the first particles are born here in frame 8. So if you take a look at the norm age attribute that we just created, most of the particles have a very low value, in this case 0.0. .0. And as we progress in the animation, this normalized age will increase. Once it gets to 1, the particle will die. So notice how none of the particles are going over this value, because that would mean that they are already dead. So we're going to fit this value to multiply the p scale, and this will make the boxes shrink as a particle's age. Now, just remember that when the particles are born, the normalized age is 0. So we would have to fit this value from 1 to 0. So let's do this. Type f at p scale and type asterisk equals and then type fit 0, 1 f at norm h comma 1 comma 0 close parentheses semicolon and press control enter so now we will have the particles with a p scale value of 1 when they are born and slowly as they reach their maximum life, they should reach the value of zero and just disappear. Okay, so I wanted to show you this with the giant cubes just because it's easier to see, but we also need to change the actual scale of the cubes. And actually, I don't want all the boxes to be the exact same size. I want to randomize the values so some of the boxes are smaller than others. So if we go back to our p scale definition, instead I will type rand, and I will use the original ID value of the particles as a seed for the random function. So now that I mention, we may have deleted the ID attribute, so I will revise that in a second. For now, open parentheses and type at ID, close parentheses, and press Control Enter. So apparently it has the attribute. Let us see. 
not sure if it's working let's go back to the attribute delete and yeah apparently we didn't include the id attribute so let's do that now type caret id and now every single box should have a different id value so just to make sure go to the geometry spreadsheet and here it is so now each box should have different random scales which apparently they do okay so finally I will add some controls so I can decide at any moment how small or how big these boxes can be and for that I'm going to use the fit01 function again so remember fit01 will remap values that go from 0 to 1 and in this case remember random will always return values from 0 to 1 to whatever two values you decide for example if you put a comma after the random the first value you type will be the minimum value so in this case let's type 0 0.001 and after the comma you can type the maximum value so let's type with 0 0.01 so now we will have cubes going from at least 0 0.001 meters and as a maximum 0 0.01 meters so don't forget to close the parentheses and press Control enter to evaluate and there you go now we have very tiny boxes which will resemble the sand or the dust and we can clearly notice how some of them are very tiny some of them are bigger but overall they will look as very tiny grains so let's go back to our camera view we may need to increase a particle count but I think now the system is working so following we will add a few lights and try rendering these particles so we can have a finished exercise